it is the 2nd of December. That means FreeBSD 15 has been released. It was released yesterday. I was waiting for the the announcement and it, it came almost exactly when I expected it. And it was on time according to the release schedule, which is lovely. It's not often that happens, but th there we go. It was brilliant. It also means that we are now in December and the wife has decided to put a Christmas tree up. There we go. One Christmas tree. <laughs> this is not our normal Christmas tree. This is um, a spare one just for in here. The main one is in the other room. My wife is very happy with it. Me, I, I get the, the reserve tree. I didn't want one. It's Christmas. Who cares? Um, <laughs> if you do celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. If you don't, and it's just a holiday season to you, happy holidays. Let's take a look at FreeBSD 15. <laughs> All right, so we're, we're going to download and install FreeBSD 15 and then take a look at the release notes and take a look at the release notes, see what's new, see what's different, see what's changed, see what's removed, that kind of stuff. Um, there are some pretty big new features. Uh, it's worth looking at, or at least one very big new feature, and we'll take a look at that when we're installing it. I've, I've already looked at it in one of my previous videos, but... Let's have a, a, a look at it today. So I've downloaded the, uh, the Memstick. Let's uh, show you where that is. Here we go. Download FreeBSD on freebsd.org. Choose your... Tell me my mouse is starting to go funny. Choose your, arch choose your architecture. AMD64 in this case. Scroll down and get whichever one you want. Me, I got the Memstick image tend to get better results with that for me anyway um, so I've downloaded that fired up roof first let's while we're here let's just uh, check for updates no new version okay interesting 4.11 is the newest one right so uh, let's select right one thing to bear in mind is is this right this is the USB that's stuck in my machine at the moment 16 gig just bear in mind you're going to need something that's at least at least four gigabytes you might struggle with that you might need something bigger i think most of these images are designed to fit onto a dvd so you should be all right with four or four and a half gig whatever it is the that a dvd is generally speaking they fit on a, a four gig media type this usb is 16 gig so i'm not going to have that problem but um it's something just to bear in mind if, if you have problems let's select the image this is rufus by the way release and d64 mem stick and just start it's going to override everything overwrite everything on that usb stick this may take a few minutes i'll uh, i'll speed this up and i'll carry on drinking my coffee While that's doing that, we might as well have a look at the release notes for 15, mightn't we? Here we go. Let's have a look. Oh, look at this. Table of contents. I've not seen that before. <laughs> that's nice. Who wrote this? Oliver. Nice one. I, I'm assuming that you didn't write all of it, but you just modified it. Let's have a look, actually. Releases 15 or content EN releases. Right, so let's have a look. So content EN releases... 15 are real notes. Yeah, that's all well and good, but who who created it? Colin, of course you did. Anyway, whoever put a content, a table of contents, that's really, really nice. Let's see if we can find out. I'm not gonna attempt to butcher your name, Alexander, but as I can see, you've put in the TRC. That is uh, much needed, I think. Thank you for that. So. What have we got? Introduction, upgrading. All I can hear is the cat going, meow, meow. Shut up. Shut up, shut up, shut up, and shut up, okay? So upgrading from existing pre-release based system package installs. That's nice. We'll get into that. Newsland configuration changes, Newsland application changes. Oh, I like this. This is so nice. Kerberos v5 authentication service has gained a new KDC restart. 
Daily periodic scripts now show less context in emails by default to reduce output size. Yeah, that's that's quite nice. FreeBSD base repository is now defined in etc pkg freebsd.conf disabled by default systems which installed with package base prior to 15 rc1 if running relang 15.0 or november the 15th if running from stable main snapshots will need to remove the definition of the freebsd base repository from user locally to yeah they've moved it because obviously it's it's um it's a main repository and it was in user local etc repositories or repos they've moved it to etc package to be in line with the rest of uh, freebsd base repositories for ports and k mods and now base i have looked at base packages already and it is quite a an interesting change it will be interesting to see if um it screws things up i don't uh, check out the video links in the description PowerD utility is now enabled in etcrc.conf by default and images for ARM64 Raspberry Pis prevents the CPU clock from running slow all the time. Okay. The add user utility used by BSD install will now create a ZFS dataset for new users home directory if the parent directory resides on a ZFS dataset. Okay. Date program now supports nanoseconds. Okay because uh, you can't get enough uh, seconds. Yeah, there's quite a lot of changes. EMV utility has gained an option to change the directory, which closely resembles the feature in the GNU version of EMV, although it does not support long options. Okay, a lot of PS changes. SysCTL has gained flags to filter jail, prison, and VNet variables. So users do not have to contact the source code to tell whether a variable is in a jail, prison, VNet one or not. GREP usually no longer follows symbolic links by default for recursive searches. This matches the documented behavior in the manual page. Okay. Uh, FTPD has been removed from the base system. Users who still need it can install the FTP FreeBSD FTPD port. Okay. Yeah. Smaller install, I guess. BSD config and BSD install utilities now use BSD dialog instead of the GNU dialog. Makes a lot of sense. Less GNU stuff, the better. Uh, jail command now supports the ZFS data set parameter to attach a list of ZFS data sets to a jail. New syslog utility now supports specific specifying a global compression method directly at the beginning of new syslog.conf. All historical compression flags, J, X, Y, and Z, then behave as indicating treat the file as compressible instead of compress the file with that specific method. Okay, lots of updated software. OpenSSH has been updated. OpenSSL has been updated. Time zone database has been updated. Google Test C framework has been updated. <laughs> There's loads, look at this. Lots of updates. Oh, look at that. FDisk has gone in favor of Gpark. Running it will show a warning to migrate to Gpark. So it's still there, it's not been removed. Okay. Uh, public key database has been removed. This uses DES and we hope that nobody uses it in 2025. Okay. Cloud support, loads of cloud support. Now I know that Colin has been going through issues with um, many of the cloud providers. I'm sure that will get sorted. Kernel, this section covers changes to the kernel. I bet there are loads of kernel changes. There usually are. Yeah, a fair amount. FreeBSD now supports more than four terabytes of RAM on modern machines that have a, the LA57 CPU feature. Okay, four terabytes of RAM. Who's got four terabytes of RAM? I know, I know. You don't need to tell me. Device drivers, this section, yeah, there's gonna be loads of them. And there is. Remove drivers, AGP has been deprecated and planned for removal in FreeBSD 16. Is anyone still using AGP graphics cards? I haven't seen one of them for a long time. Firewire's going, LE Ethernet driver, Syscons has been planned for removal. This has been noted as deprecated in the manual pages to notify users to migrate to VT. Okay, okay. Extended attributes on ZFS. And support for accessing remote NVMe over fabrics or NFS, UFS, ZFS. Yeah, there's loads and loads of changes. Bootloader changes. You can use the ASCII loader 
Loader now reads local configuration files. That's quite a big one. Yeah, it goes on and on and on. So there's loads and loads of stuff that's changed, loads of stuff that's been added. And FreeBSD installer, BSD install, now supports downloading and installing firmware packages after FreeBSD base system installation is complete. We've seen that, that's quite nice, lovely. Right, so we've got a load of stuff there, lovely. Let's get you out of the way. Right, so the USB is done. Let's unplug it and get that machine fired up. I need that blinking keyboard. Okay, right, let's get it started mash those keys oh seriously anyone got a, an answer to this thing because i just want it gone so annoying there we go now i don't expect this to be any different from any other version apart from the new options that are there for um for drivers and for package base which is now the default i'm told by the release notes i think i'll be able to spell my own domain wouldn't you there we go let's see yeah it says tech preview but it's it's not really, is it? If it's the default version or default method, not really a, a technology preview anymore. Would you like to fetch packages from the internet or use the limited set of packages included in this installation? We'll go network, why not? We won't use Wi-Fi, we'll use that. Okay, guided ZFS. Yeah, I know, 16 gig of memory in that. So let's change that to match it. And we'll use new EFI only. So this disc was used for when I checked out the desktop installation preview. That was uh, quite nice. Link in the description also. All right then, base, kernel debug. We don't need that. And look at all this. Compilers and related utilities. We'll have the optional and we'll have the tests. We won't bother with... You know what's interesting here is ports has gone. That's weird. Not seen that before. Root password. Where are we? Oh yeah, we're there. Skip that, skip that. We'll have that. We won't have that. We won't have that. We might as well put the mouse in. We might as well clear 10pfs. That'll do. Firmware. Yeah, as it said in the release notes, nothing really out of the ordinary here. Just the, uh, the firmware and the package base, which makes things easier to update, I guess, because they're just packages. Okay, mouse works. Would I like to add a user? Well, I might as well. Let's add me in, shall we? Leave it empty. Logging group. Yeah, I always put me in wheel. I probably shouldn't do that. Should probably put me in staff, so at least like an SU. Uh, but I don't. And video. I only recently started doing that. But if I ever do want a, a graphical interface, that does help. Logging class. Shell of choice. Personally, I like CSH. Home directory. No. Yes. No, 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 and yes, no. That should be it. Here we go. So let's finish, no, and reboot, and we'll pull out the USB once it's synced. There we go. Pull that USB out, put its lid back on wherever I put it. There we go. And you can go over there for now. There we go. That was pretty quick. <laughs> up, up, down, up. <laughs> Don't know why it does that. And here we go. So let's log in as root and I'm just going to package install Pico Alpine, get that done and make a change to ECC, SSH, SSHD. And then we can swap over to that. RC.conf, SSHD, restart. Coolio. All right, let's get you out of the way. You don't need you. I hate that keyboard. It made by anyway, is it a Dell? I think it's Dell. All right, let's move back to my desktop clues get out of the way and let's log into the test bed i know it's because i keep changing it there we go let's make it big better make myself look big <laughs> there we go look at that right off the bat free bsd release and the uh the checkout for that as well excellent so let's just confirm that nice so if i have a quick look at etc package there should be three repositories there now. Ports, KMods, and Base. Yeah. So let's do a quick package upgrade. I wouldn't be surprised if there are new packages. Oh, there aren't. Coolio. So, empty. And as I said in one of my previous videos, Ma, of course, sounded really Essex then, didn't I? In one of my previous videos, um, 
One of the real benefits of FreeBSD that I personally am very grateful for is the fact that the more it changes, the more it stays the same. It really hasn't changed much in the 20 odd years that I've been using it. I, 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 th I think that's invaluable. I don't really have to keep learning stuff. And I'm not saying that any other operating system isn't like that because that's not the case. There are some that are specifically designed to do exactly the same thing, but a lot of them you update and you have to learn things. Even on Windows, you know, they, they change the, the interface, the graphical interface, and you have to find things and it's always usually in the same place. Or oh, I've mentioned one today, moving the, the package base from user local ETC package repo to etc package freebsd.conf apart from that really you get the same thing over and over just with incremental bumps in performance and um, updated software and, and added features I find that really invaluable I don't really have to keep going learning stuff I've said it before I'll say it again that's exactly how it is Anyway, FreeBSD is out and it looks to be like it's going to be a, a good release. I don't really have the ability to do any benchmarks, so I can't do any Wi-Fi benchmarks or what well, I could, but I'm not going to. It, I'll leave that to others. I know that um, Sam at Sheridan Computers likes to do some benchmarks. He did it with the Wi-Fi quite recently when they upgraded the, the Wi-Fi driver. I'm not going to do it. It's just going over old ground. There's no point. It's one day old. Like I said, it's the 2nd of December today. It came out last night. Let me know what you think so far. Let me know what you thought of your upgrade process. That would be quite an interesting story to read. Just bang it all in the comments. Let me know. And don't forget to give the video a like and a share. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. We is out of here. Why have I gone so Essexy anyway? I don't understand that.